Hi, Rachel. As a mom with a crazy work schedule, my sleep habits are far from perfect. So I want to walk you through key parts of my day to show how you can still get good sleep even when you bend the rules. My first tip is one my kids actually help me with. Don't sleep in. If you have a bad night, you might think it's good to get a little extra sleep during the day, but that depletes your sleep drive, which makes it harder to sleep again the next night. It also delays your body clock, which makes you want to naturally fall asleep and wake up later and later. Big problem for night owls like me. Mama, wake up! So if you have trouble falling asleep, do have a consistent wake time and bright light first thing in the morning. Getting that bright light at the same time every morning helps to tell your biological clock this is wake time, which helps to ensure that you get wake signals at the right time and sleep signals at the right time. A little later in the morning, I sometimes have an energy drink. Now this might sound like a terrible idea, but I have great news for you coffee lovers out there. You don't have to rush to quit caffeine. Sleep clinicians actually tell me despite all the negative attention it gets, caffeine is almost never the culprit in chronic sleep problems. And if quitting caffeine stresses you out or makes you feel like you have to sleep in or nap, that can be worse for your sleep than the caffeine itself. Do my caffeine quiz. Ask yourself, is there any reason to believe caffeine is causing my sleep problems? If so, then try to cut back gradually. But if your answer is you don't believe caffeine is causing your sleep problems, then it's unlikely quitting caffeine is gonna fix them. So come nighttime, I do what I call a screen time scrub by lowering the brightness and the blue light levels on my screens and also trying to sit a good distance away. More importantly, choose passive activities whenever possible, like watching a TV show rather than reading and responding to emails. And my favorite screen hack, change your device's color filter to grayscale. This makes the screen black and white, which makes it much less addictive, so you're less likely to be scrolling and scrolling hours past your bedtime. I can't wait for you to try these do's and don'ts tonight. She is an ABC News contributor. She's the author of The Sleep Fix, Diane Macedo. So Diane, I am a night owl too. People have called me Little Hoot since I was a little girl. <laughs> so I totally relate to you on the night owl, and I totally relate to you on caffeine. When I drink a cup of coffee, a cappuccino, a big giant cup of tea, all I want to do is go take a nap. The, the problem is a lot of us try to do all these perfect things when we're regularly not sleeping right. to try to fix our sleep. So we will quit caffeine, we'll give up all our screens in the evening and so on. And what that does is it generally, it makes us fixate more on our sleep. We then worry about the caffeine. We worry about the screens. And that's actually worse for our sleep than the caffeine or the screens themselves. So a lot of it is just about relaxing. That's right. And the misconception that we need eight hours. And so my, my other don't that I want to get in there is don't try to force eight hours. You know, we're always hearing about the recommended eight hours of sleep, but saying everybody needs the same amount of sleep is like saying we all need the same amount of food. It's just not true. And on the flip side, a lot of people have sleep disorders and assume that they don't because they get the recommended eight hours of sleep, not realizing that their sleep is disrupted all night long. So instead of trying to adhere to these numbers and all these rules, check in with yourself. That's my do. Do check in with yourself and, and see how you feel. If you feel like you need a nap all day and you're dozing off in waiting rooms, something's wrong. Either you're not spending enough time in bed or something's disrupting your sleep while you're there. And my book does provide guidance on how to figure out what the problem is and how to address it. And of course, in some cases, you will just have to go see a sleep specialist. But on the flip side, if you feel fine all day and your energy levels are good, then you're probably getting enough sleep, even if it's not the recommended eight hours.